Hey, this time it's the panner. The panner is a versatile component that can be used for a lot of things. It's a bit like the axis panner in that it moves things in a straight line, um, but it's uh, got a few different properties uh, and can be used in a varying way, a uh, varying number of ways compared to the axis panner. Let's get started with a cube. So create a new 3D model box, shrink down the box, inspect the box. This doesn't need a parent object like the axis panner. Instead, we can add it directly to the cube. So attach component, transform drivers, and then we are presented with a choice of four options here. Unlike the axis panner, there are three, four varieties of the panner. They are panner 1D, 2D, 3D, and 4D. Each of them differs in that they um, increase the number of variables that they can support. So panner 1D only supports uh, one number. Panner 2D supports two numbers. So that's the float 2, int 2 varieties. 3D is the float 3, and 4D are float 4s, etc. I haven't yet found a use for Panna 4D, so we won't be covering it, but I can cover 3D, 2D, and 1D in one video. So for the 3D, we're going to use the cube here, because that's where we started, so Panna 3D. At the bottom here, you'll see Panna 3D has been added, and that it needs a target property. The target property is a float 3, so we're going to put in the position value of the cube. Uh, you'll see it instantly disappears, but where it's actually gone is it's gone to zero, zero, zero of this main uh, new world. I can close the skybox tabs for now. I'm going to set here an offset, which is also the first property here. This is where the panning starts. So I'm going to set that to one. Do five actually, so we can go back up to where we were. And you'll see it's now at five units high. I'm also now going to set a speed to two. Uh, on the Y, and you'll see it's shot up into the sky. That speed was too high, that's my fault. Also the wrong axis. Um, so I'm going to set the speed here down on the X axis to be 0 0.01. It still doesn't look like it's doing much, and that's because our repeat value is really high. If we drop our repeat value down to 4, for example, and then we raise our speed to 1, You'll see it's now panning across a, a distance of four times one unit. So you'll see the um, X value here is going from one, uh, actually zero to, to four here. If I increase the repeat here to say five, You'll see it now goes just a bit further. And if I increase it to 50, it will shoot off into the distance. And that's because it uh, is going to the, the nearest point in its animation cycle. So it's back here, but it's going to take a long time to get back. We can also do this on multiple axes. I'm going to drop this, I'm going to drop this down back to five so that it's near us. And I'm going to add a repeat of 5 on the um, y-axis here, and I'm going to set that speed to 1 as well. And now you'll see it's moving diagonally. That's all the properties. You can also do it on the z. We won't do that though. There is a pre-offset. I'm not entirely sure what that does, but we're just going to try it. I'm going to try it on the Y. So if I do a negative pre-offset, what happens there? I'm actually not entirely sure. Um, if you know, drop it in the comments. I don't tend to use it. We'll continue, as though I did know what that is. If you, if you know what it is, I can always put a comment or an annotation in to let you know. That is the Panna 3D. For the 2D, we're going to do something different, and there's a reason why I'm in this world, as opposed to my usual um, space world, and that's there's a pretty skybox here. We're going to animate this skybox, so I'm going to face this way, which is where the, the, the central cluster of this uh, nebula is, and I'm going to open the inspector. I'm going to find the skybox, and I'm going to find the skybox material. 
you'll see here this is the nebula here and this is a projection 360 material which is a skybox we'll cover more on skyboxes in another video but what we're going to do today is we're going to change the angle offset using a panda 2d now the angle offset is a float 2 and it's got two values the x and the y so we're going to attach component transform drivers panna 2d you see again it takes a target and we're going to drop in the the angle offset here we're going to scroll down here and we're going to leave this repeat as a really big number to start with and we're going to put a really small speed in you'll see why in just a second so up that speed maybe a little bit more there we go that's done it so now you'll see that the skybox is rotating ever so slightly this is really good for sort of space maps where you want to give the interpretation that we're uh, orbiting or something it was actually um lewis's space station map where i set this up in to make it look like the skybox was rotating in that map oh sorry make the space station look like it was rotating so uh thanks to lewis for uh prompting this as there's no um repeat value that's been specified this number here 3.4 times 10 to the power of 38 that's what that means e plus means times 10 to the power of 38 is just about the largest number that NEOS can handle. It means it's just going to keep going at a speed of 0 0.5 for pretty much the end of time. Um, and so you see this number just keeps going up. We could also do the um, Y. I wouldn't advise this on a skybox. It's quite um, quite dizzying. I'm going to turn it off shortly, but now it's doing it on the Y as well. So this is an easy way to sort of animate things where you don't need logic, so you just need the panic component. As another example here, we're going to remove this so we don't get dizzy, and we're going to go to the ground. The ground on this map is this uh, square material, uh, sorry, grass material, square grass material. That's why I said square. Um, if we attach the transform drivers panna 2D to this, and then we pop in the um, one of the material values, so here I pulled open the material. On the material here we've got the where is it texture offset value that's also a float to is the x y so we can drop texture offset of the material oh dear sorry into the target field and then we will animate the x ever so slightly and now the ground is moving you can all see it a lot clearer on this ball as well you'll see it's moving It's common to do this with a different type of material, but we'll cover that material in a different video, so look out for that. This is the beginnings of like creating water or the ocean. Um, in the, It's a material that moves, but the actual ground doesn't. So if I land here, you see I'm not moving, but the ground is. Again, you could uh, specify a speed for the Y as well, but this will get quite dizzying quite fast. Because now it's moving diagonally. If I had to stand there, I'd feel quite dizzy. You can increase these numbers. I'm not going to, just for the sake of anyone that's motion sensitive. I'm also going to remove this. There we go. So it's now stopped, and we'll delete these. For panel 1D, we're going to use a cylinder and the reason why is because a cylinder has a property which is just a single float so if we open up the cylinder in the inspector you'll see it has a height property and that's just one number here height one so if we add attach component transform drivers panel 1d and we drop height in You'll see it goes to um, a flat height because it's zero right now. We'll drop the repeat down to five. And we'll set the speed to uh, 0 0.5. Now you'll see that the cylinder grows. It'll grow until it reaches a height of five, which is just coming up right now. And then it'll go back down again. So again, it's for repeating values. I don't know what you could use this for in a world. Um, it's just an example where I needed a, uh, a float one and I found a float one on an easy to create object. 
Uh, and that's it for the actual panners. I haven't found a use for the Panda 40. If you have, let me know in the comments. Um, I'll be sure to cover it. The Float 4 variety is usually used for rotations, and those are quite complex and involve a lot of maths that I'm not too familiar with. Let me know what you use the Panda next, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Hope this shows how you can do simple animations of things without using logics as well which is nice to see. The skybox trick that we did for Lewis World is is great. Like we did it really slowly in that world um, and uh, combined it with making the sun rotate and it, it's just a really nice world. So go check that one out too.